Sairam. On the 3rd of December 2022, my father, my beloved father, breathed his last at the Shankara Cancer Hospital in Bangalore. Barely hours after having performed his funeral and the final rites and immersing the ashes in the Mother Kaveri River, I am here speaking about this. The reason I am here is not to speak about what my father means to me, what he has done to me or what he will always be for me because I don't think I can capture that in one or two or three or even a hundred talks. There was an occasion when Swami had visited the boys hostel and he walked into the kitchen. There a kind of sweet was being made, a fried sweet, wherein you would take a piece of dough and put some sweet inside it, roll it up and then fry it. Now Swami took the dough and he flattened it and then he rolled it up into the sweet without actually putting the sweet or that Purnam inside. This was narrated to us by Ravi Kumar sir and he was there to witness it. And Swami gave this to the cook and said, fry this. The cook then said, Swami, we didn't put the Purnam inside. Swami said, you just fry it. He fried it and when the sweet was ready, I mean the so-called sweet, Swami took it and broke it into half and there inside was that sweet Purnam. Swami said, see, when this hand touches anything, it becomes Purnam. What a beautiful statement that is. Purnam on one hand means sweet. Purnam in Sanskrit also means complete, fulfilled. When the Lord's hand touches anything, that includes our lives. Our lives become Purnam, that is sweet and complete. And this is the reason I am narrating what I am narrating now, because I want to show you how with his divine touch, Swami made the life of one devotee sweet and complete, Purnam. Not only did he take care of the welfare of my father, he also took care of the farewell. Swami takes care of both the welfare and the farewell. And this particular talk is about that beautiful divine farewell. Towards the end of 2021 and the beginning of 2022, for several months, my father had been suffering from a persistent cough and had been continuously losing weight. Despite multiple visits to the general hospital and the super speciality hospital at Puttaparthi, there was no clear diagnosis. In the March of 2022, my wife said that we better get him checked at Bangalore. And so, when my father and mother visited Bangalore for a family function, we took him to a doctor, a specialist doctor, a very good general physician. And she immediately knew something was amiss. She ordered for a couple of ultrasounds and within a day, the diagnosis was clear. My father was suffering from liver cancer. I was at work when this diagnosis came and I was shattered to hear this. I did not know what to do next. My father did not have medical insurance. My only insurance was Bhagwan, and is Bhagwan will always be Bhagwan, and I had no clue how to proceed. The two hospitals that I had visited all my life, the super speciality hospital at Bangalore and at Puttaparthi, both had nothing in terms of facilities for cancer. And as I was wondering what to do, my mother-in-law, she told me that one of her very dear friends is in the administrative position 
at the Shankara Hospital, the Shankara Cancer Hospital in Bangalore. And would I like to refer my father there? Dear brothers and sisters, I was in a state where I could not make any decision. I just said, yes, please, anything. I will go along with the flow because Swami, you only have to guide me. And that is how I sent all the reports to Auntie Daya. Look at that. You know, now when I look back at every stage, Swami keeps reassuring us that once you have surrendered to me, don't worry, I will take care. However bad the situation might seem. This auntie's name is Daya. Compassion. Daya means compassion. And she was an epitome of compassion. She spoke so lovingly. She reassured. She said, don't worry. I will get this checked by the best doctor here. We have a Dr. Vishnu who is the best. And I felt wonderful just hearing the name. The hospital's name is Shankara. That is Lord Shiva. And the doctor's name is Vishnu. That is Lord Narayana. And Vishnu and Shiva are together. Ah. It feels so wonderful. The story did not end there. The next day, Daya auntie calls me and tells me, Arvind, Dr. Vishnu says he knows you. He says you're his cousin. Ah, Vishnu. Yes, I have a cousin by name Vishnu with whom I spent all my childhood. He's a distant cousin, but we have grown up together. In fact, it was my father who taught both Vishnu and myself how to pedal the cycle, how to ride the bicycle. And now, Dr. Vishnu is a very, very well-known, renowned, foremost hepato-cancer surgeon in Bangalore, serving at the Shankara Hospital. Was I amazed? That itself made me see, feel so wonderful. And so we were at the Shankara Hospital. Wow, as soon as we entered the hospital, dear brothers and sisters, you know, we often hear of how when we enter a hospital, you start with the billing and the money and the corporatization. Shankara Hospital was different. As soon as we entered, there is a temple of Lord Shiva and next to him, the temple of the Goddess Mother. We bowed down in surrender, knowing that our Swami is an epitome of this Shiva and Shakti, right? Seeing Shiva Shakti at that hospital felt like Swami had come assuring us, don't worry, I will take care. But the CT scan that was done after that, it proved to be extremely painful. Dad had two tumors, one measuring seven centimeters, the other measuring eight centimeters. You know, the other dimensions, it was really so huge that my cousin, Dr. Vishnu, he told me, Arvind, we can't operate this. It has become very big. It's gone into the hepatic artery. Uh, it would be very, very risky to try to cut it out because the cancer will immediately erupt and spread through the bloodstream. Then what? He said, look here, we can't even do any kind of chemotherapy because that's also dangerous. Hearing all this, I was getting scared. I got to know that he was in the terminal stage, the final stage. And you know, the internet gives us all the information and reading all the information that was available about the final stages of liver cancer. It was very, very depressing. An optimistic estimate that I had was that father would be around only for about two months. And in those two months also, he might possibly have to go in and out of the ICU, the intensive care unit, a couple of times. Just hearing that there would be no treatment possible was such a dampener. That was when, you know, Daya auntie explained with all love about the importance of quality of life. You know, on one hand, you battle the cancer. On the other hand, you try to ensure a good quality of life for the cancer patient. Because, you know, the cancer drugs are extremely powerful and they have very, very strong side effects. Sometimes those side effects are worse than the cancer itself. So you have to walk the fine middle path between fighting the cancer and fighting the side effects of the cancer medication. My father was put on a drug called Lenvatinib. And this drug is extremely expensive. 
Each tablet costs about 1000 Indian rupees and my father had to take 3 tablets per day which makes it 3000 Indian rupees almost 100,000 Indian rupees a month and I was wondering where the finances would come from. It was this sort of a bleak scenario that our family was faced with in the first week of March 2022. At that time, my wife recollects that seeing the beautiful environs of the Shankara hospital, my father already remarked, if I die, I want to die here. It is such a beautiful place. He told it with a smile on his face, but it wiped out all the joy and smiles from my face and my heart. I broke down weeping in front of Swami. I said, Swami, when my father reached 60 years of age, <clears throat> that is a landmark figure and the Shashtabdi Purti is conducted. At that time, Swami, I did not have enough finances to conduct this 60th birthday on a grand scale. I had planned to conduct my father's 70th birthday called the Bhimarata Shanti on a grand scale. But now, Swami, the Bhimarata Shanti is six months away and my father has only two months. I won't be able to do that as well. Even there, Swami, I don't know how long my father will stay. The medication is also so expensive. Swami, if you had only inspired a thought in me that I could take medical insurance for my father, maybe to a certain extent, the bills would have been easier for me. What do I do now, Swami? And then I remembered what Swami had told one of my classmates in an interview. That if you dedicate your youth to Swami, you have the right to demand from Swami. And possibly, it was one of those rare occasions where as I broke down, I said, Swami, you have said that if somebody gives their youth to you, they have the right to demand from you. I am demanding now, Swami. I am demanding. Do something, Swami. Do something. I do not want to stretch my hand and take a pie from anyone. Yet, I want my father to receive the best treatment. And I, I don't know, Swami, I wanted to conduct the Bhimarata Shanti. There are so many things. And then Swami started to work. It's not as if Swami was not working, but it is just that He makes us aware of the situation so that we are able to better appreciate the blessing that comes. What is the miracle I'm talking about? The very next day, I get a call from Vishnu who says, Arvind, this medicine, it's called Lenvatinib. This medicine, there is a doctor who is ready to give it to you. Will you accept it? Why will I not? <laughs> Why will I not? I said, yeah, I'm very grateful to whoever this doctor is. Please let me know what I should do. That is when I got to know that a trial, a clinical trial was on. This clinical trial is not to test the uh, use of Lenvatinib. Lenvatinib has been in the market since 2018. But yet, it has been there to see how effectively it works, how long it lasts. And for that trial, they are looking for volunteers. And my father is a perfect candidate. Out of the 50 people possibly needed for the trial, there was one slot available for my father. And dear brothers and sisters, on the day when I said to Swami that, why don't you inspire me to have taken the health insurance so that some amount of financial burden could be saved? Swami grants my father a place in a clinical trial where not just the medication, all the blood tests, all the CT scans, everything possible will be done free in a hospital that is considered most expensive in Bangalore, which is the HCG hospital. Week after week, like VIPs, we would be made to sit 
while my father lay down in an air conditioned room in one of the top hospitals in Bangalore when everything, all the treatment and all the medication, all the tests, everything would be done absolutely free of cost. Free of cost. Swami ensured that I didn't have to stretch my hand to take a pie from anyone. He directly gave the entire package free. That is how Swami gives Medicare. I was foolish to think that it is restricted to two hospitals in two geographical locations. Size, grace works everywhere in the world. It is there for every devotee. You just have to call. And then began a new phase in life where my father was a cancer patient. And I had heard horror stories of the quality of life for cancer patients. My father had such a wonderful quality of life. He continued to cook. He continued to sing bhajans. Huh? He continued to play with the grandchildren. He continued to do everything that he used to do. And if not for his slightly thin frame, nobody would have the slightest idea that he is suffering from cancer. It was such an absolutely normal life. The doctors were surprised. Everyone was surprised because this was supposed to have concluded in two months. One month went by, two months, three months, four months into the trial. The medicine is on, the medication is on, the side effects are minimal. Dad is so happy and peaceful and it is so wonderful. I, I just could not believe that actually in the month of September, I was here planning for the Bhimara, the Shanti of my father. We could perform, me, my sister, my wife. Her, my brother-in-law, all of us together, we could perform the Bhimaratha Shanti ceremony where it was like a second marriage for father and mother. So beautiful, so wonderful and my father sat through the entire four hours. And this is in month five after having got that diagnosis of cancer. That was not all. This medication, as I said, has many, many side effects. There was one huge side effect, unbelievable but true. My father all his life has been a diabetes and blood pressure patient. As a side effect of this drug, my father need not take any more insulin or any more sugar tablets. He also gave up all his blood pressure tablets. Can you believe it when I say that having been diagnosed with terminal cancer, the medical bill for my father came down to half of what it was previously. If this is not an example and proof of divine grace, love and compassion, what else is? The trial got over in six months and now it meant that I had to now procure medicines and everything else for my father. But again, Swami's divine touch, the doctor treating him tells, you people seem like such good people. I feel like helping you. Don't worry about the medicines. As long as your father needs, I will request sponsors and get you medicine free of cost. Again, I was just overwhelmed receiving Swami's grace. My father's weight remained steady at 60 kilograms. His activities continued. Of course, as I said, there would be a couple of days when he would fall a bit ill. He would get fever or he would get a cold. 
he always had sores on his feet which pained him but then with some painkillers and some basic medication along with the cancer medication life went on smoothly wonderfully beautifully in fact my sister had her arangetram performance the bharatnatyam dancer that she is she had to give her first ever public performance in an auditorium and it requires massive effort 4 hours of dancing and my father was able to attend that in fact he bubbled with pride at what his daughter had done and i was just marveling at swami's miracle that somebody who should have gone <laughs> within 2 months is able to sit through a 4 hour performance without getting fatigued tired and still having the energy to talk and appreciate that that is divine love i enjoyed the whole program and i got tears in my eyes shruti has done wonderfully all this while what we didn't realize is swami was preparing all of us swami was preparing my father for the final journey and that happened when i was at colombo in sri lanka delivering talks i got a call from my wife and she said i am going to put a bharti i am going to pick him up in an ambulance and come to bangalore i rushed immediately from colombo i also reached put a bharti the super speciality hospital graciously gave the medical ambulance and in that ambulance we rushed my father to the shankara hospital in bangalore and even as he entered the hospital he was admitted into the icu it was dr vishnu and his colleagues at the helm now and they were determining the future course of action what had happened was an infection had got into my father's lungs at the same time a, the cancer had traveled as blood clots to the lungs and the lungs were beginning to fail the oxygen saturation was dropping to levels below 85 it usually is around 97 98 or 100 for most of us it was dropping to below 85 and therefore he needed assistance in the icu the doctors however were confident that he would come out of this we would be able to fight the infection but then with the cancer going on i always dreaded how father's end would be because dear brothers and sisters once the cancer spreads everywhere each and every part each and every organ starts failing and starts you know giving trouble very very painful extreme suffering before departure and i knew in the back of my mind that even if my father comes out of this out of the hospital i mean because i was sure he'll come out of the icu if he comes out of the hospital again it's a matter of time before things start failing and there's extreme suffering in the offing and i was praying that my father should not have pain within 2 days my father was out of the icu and in the ward the doctor was saying that in another 2 3 days we will send you home i was happy the next day in the ward i thought we will have a pleasant surprise for dad but well dad seemed to have planned something different for us it was a surprise for us because even as his ultrasound was done to determine the growth of the cancer and a ct scan was done he came and collapsed in the ward and he began to breathe with a lot of effort and his oxygen saturation began to fall again he was rushed immediately into the icu within a day of having come out of icu and this time when he went in things seemed bleak the infection had spread a lot in the lungs it was beginning to fill up with liquid and the cancer had traveled there and they were finding it hard we all filed in one by one into the icu we spoke with dad he said he reassured us he said swami is with me don't worry i am fine all this happened but that night as i was going back home in the car my sister and my wife both told me that dad had told them that he was in extreme pain and suddenly i felt so saddened and again i cried 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 bucket loads thinking of my father who has such low pain tolerance imagining him going through so much pain 
I asked my cousin Dr. Vishnu whether some painkiller could be given to him. He told me that Arvind, if we give pain medication, then his breathing will get affected. We can't afford to do that now. I said, okay, that's what Dr. Vishnu could do. But then I turned to my Swami. I said, Swami, it looks like my father is journeying towards you. A journey towards you should not be painful, Swami. He's in so much pain. Why can't pain be relieved? I broke down and cried and I said, Swami, he should not have pain. He should not have pain. He should not have pain. Dear brothers and sisters, these are not tears of sorrow. Huh? These are tears of joy because the next day when I went to meet my father, the first thing he tells is, Arvind, I have no pain. No pain. And later Dr. Vishnu reveals what happened in the night. He tells me that late in the night he felt it's okay. Some amount of pain relief can be given. So he calls up the sister in the ICU and tells her to administer pain medication to my father. And even as she goes to administer the pain medication, my father stops her and asks, what is it? She tells it is to relieve you of the pain. He smiles at her and tells, no, I'm not in pain. I'm not in pain and I don't want. And can you believe it? No pain medication was given to him because he was under the effect of the most beautiful, most compassionate and most loving pain medication in the universe called Dear Swami. And that day, even as I got joy of my father not having any pain, came the dreaded conversation about the ventilator. I was told that this oxygen support, which had been started at 3%, was now at 60%. And now that was also being insufficient. And so they will be amping it up to 80%. They said, Arvind, after some time, we won't be able to do this anymore. We will have to ventilate him, put him on a ventilator, meaning they will make a hole in the neck and there will be a machine that will assist him in breathing itself, not just giving him oxygen. And that is when I asked my cousin, Dr. Vishnu, what would you do if it was your father? Would you put him on a ventilator? He said, no. Because once in this scenario, in this situation, you get onto a ventilator, there is no coming back. It's only suffering. My dad also had the same thoughts. He didn't want the ventilator. My mother didn't want the ventilator. And so I signed the DNR form, the do not resuscitate form, refusing the ventilator and instructing that if anything were to happen to my father, don't try to resurrect him with electric paddles or electric shocks or anything. After that, I went to my father and said, Appa, it looks like Swami has decided that you should be with him. The doctors are trying very hard, but the infection has spread everywhere. They say that soon they were to put on a ventilator, but as we have decided, I have told them no for the ventilator. And father understood immediately. He became calm. He said, okay. I said, dad, please think of Swami and Swami alone. Go straight to Swami. Don't get attracted by any other distraction along the way. Don't get moved out of compassion on any other being along the way, go straight to Swami. My father smiled and told me, keep quiet, leave me alone. Amazing. He wanted to be left alone. I said, Dad, we don't want, I mean, all of this is communicating through grunts and eyes. I told him, Dad, we don't want to leave you alone now, we want to be here. And he says, I am not alone. Why are you not alone? Is Swami with you? He says, yes, Swami is here. You go. He sent my mother, my sister and me out. So calm, so peaceful. I mean, it's amazing. We were much more agitated than him. <laughs> I was unable to believe the peace and calm he was exuding. I remembered that he was not wearing the silver ring that Swami had given him and it had remained out. So the next day, the first thing that was done is I brought this ring. And even as he saw the ring, he showed his finger and said, put it. I told the doctor there that this has been given to him by his guru and it should always be on his hand. The doctor agreed. And so Swami's ring went on his hand and his mind was constantly contemplating on Swami. Even as we felt that the end was drawing near, we decided to put Swami chanting Gayatri and the Sai Gayatri on a phone beside him. 
again he refused all of that he was in communion with swami he said don't worry he patted me on my cheek asked me whether i was doing well he said you don't worry i was feeling so overwhelmed i said father if you are with swami and you are happy i know you are not able to give any expression now because by now carbon dioxide was accumulating in his lungs and he was breathing struggling to breathe he was breathing 50 60 breaths per minute i said but father if you are fine just give me a smile and then in that condition with a mask on his face my father with compassionate eyes gave such a beautiful beaming smile to me i bowed down the doctors told that this would be the last night the w- exact words were it will be a miracle if he survives this night but then dear brothers and sisters the one who decides when the breath comes into the body and the when the breath leaves the body that is him right dad stayed through that night he stayed through the next night as well and on the 3rd of december in the morning i woke up to a dream a dream in which my father was seated on the bed smiling asking me for something to eat and to watch something and i was asked thinking and asking him we are all so serious here and you are so casual you want to watch some video and eat things that is when i woke up and i realized the ironical situation where we are serious because of him but he is so calm and comfortable and smiling and i felt that this was the day my father would leave i quickly checked what day it was the 3rd of december turned out to be the holy day of moksha ekadashi it is also the 3rd of december 2022 is also the bhagavad gita jayanti it is the birthday the day when the bhagavad gita was given to arjuna by lord krishna and on that holy day father left peacefully in fact the sisters in the icu in the ward everyone they all said that he was such a beautiful wonderful patient always smiling never gave any trouble the beautiful peaceful painless manner in which my father traveled and reached the lotus feet of swami is a miracle in itself and the other miracle is the absolute peace comfort and joy that is filling my mother's heart my wife's heart my heart my sister's heart none of us believe it or not none of us wept on the day he left we had cried so much before that but the day he left it felt as if we were having swami's darshan that is the power the beauty the joy the love of our beloved swami dear brothers and sisters he converts something that is so tragic in the eyes of the world into something so beautiful and uplifting he granted us peace and serenity in the heart by showing us that father had attained the ultimate in life and that we should use his life as an example for us to lead lives in the same manner even as i speak this i realize that this is possibly one of those few talks where i haven't cried at all and even now as i think of my father joy fills my heart joy radiates from my heart of course now and then i suddenly feel a little wistful thinking that i won't see that form again but then so many have been those moments and those experiences that convince me that i should not mourn i should not feel sad because my father is in a, such a beautiful place at his lotus feet before i conclude i just want to share one final episode that happened the day before dad left i told him father you'll be with swami from there you will bless us and guide us right he looked at me with a half smile as if i was being stupid and foolish to ask such a question he didn't reply anything I said father you will be with swami and take care of us right again same response it was as if how could you be so foolish in asking this this is a rhetorical question because definitely i'll be there 
and with that smile that he gave me recollecting that with the smile that bhagwan gives and recollecting that i would like to conclude by expressing my deepest sense of gratitude to swami and to all of his forms and representatives around the world around the globe who poured in so much love respect affection condolences through different media of telephone message facebook everywhere i just have not had the time to respond to all of them but i have read through all of them felt very touched felt very beautiful this kind of a global family is possible only only through vasudeva kutumbakam the whole world the whole universe becomes a family because it is nourished by swami's love once again expressing deepest gratitude to swami and to the swami in all of you thank you jai sai ram